everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are really excited today. We are talking about one of the newest mystery shows. We're talking about the cases of Mystery Lane and have very special guests with us today from the Criminality Podcast. We have Rebecca and Melissa with us. And uh, why don't you both introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your podcast. We had you as a sponsor, so people probably heard a little bit about you mm-hmm. over the last couple of weeks, but it's fun to actually get a chance to talk to you. Why don't you start, uh, Rebecca? Sure. Thanks for having us on. Um, I'm Rebecca, and I am one half of Criminality, which hopefully you guys heard the uh, the ad. We're a podcast that explores the intersection of true crime and reality TV. Melissa and I both have a background in true crime. She has a another podcast and I for three years also had an interview format show called Dialogue. So we were deep in that genre, but we found we both loved reality TV, which was a really nice respite from the dark and <laughs> murderous. So we teamed up to do um, a twice a month show about reality TV stars getting into all kinds of trouble. Mm-hmm. And we've been doing it for two years now. Wow. Now, what, what about you, Melissa? Um, I, I mean, Rebecca took all the good stuff. So I'm just <laughs> here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, um, I got to listen to the ad you guys did for us when I was listening to your show and I was like, Oh, I would listen to that show. That's really great. So thank you. You did a great job. Oh, thank you. I'll let Jax know. Cause uh, she, she did it with me. So that was fun. Yeah, It was awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, really they're going to be the best ones to hear it from. And Rebecca, of course, did a great job explaining it. Yeah. And I'm here and I'm excited about this mm-hmm. today. Yeah. So I'm curious your both of your backgrounds as far as how you got started just podcasting in general. Um, do you have like an acting background? Do you have a mm. how did it all how did you get started, Rebecca? Hold on, oh. before you start, which one of us do you think is the uh ac- has an acting background? There's one of the two of us does. Oh mm. um, this is interesting. Um I I, I guess I'd say Rebecca, but I don't know why Dang, you I got say it. that. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. She exudes, um, she that's, that. <laughs> Melissa loves to turn everything into a guessing game and really put people <laughs> on the spot. This is a lot of the setup of our show is her quizzing me in like ways I wasn't ready for. Um, I That is my background. And, and the further away from it I get, which is many, many years, the more I realize, like had you know, radio didn't really appeal to me, but like had the medium existed a long time ago, I probably would have found it. I've been like recording myself into boom boxes since I was five, Uh loved hearing the sound of my voice until I got old enough to hate it. But, um, yeah, storytelling, I would say for me was the draw to podcasting and true Uh crime was, um, that's where I really fell in love with the medium was the podcast serial. And, I wanted to, to make one of my own and kind of fill maybe a small gap that I felt existed in the market, which was not very big, but you know, is smaller every day. And, um, so yeah, for me, that was the draw. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Melissa, what about reality TV aside from you said, you talked about the escapism, but what else, and what is like your top couple shows? Oh, thank you for this. Um, <laughs> no one in my life ever asked me this question. <laughs> My hands are sweaty. I'm so excited. Okay. Reality TV is the best thing to ever happen to man. Is that too far? (laughs) Am I going too far? (laughs) You're like, I can't walk running water (laughs) down below antibiotics. Eh, No, it's okay. 50, 50 on that one. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I just love reality TV as a like nonsense, whatever I can be invested in some, it's like hearing somebody else's drama. I don't want to be a part of it, but like, you can tell me all the details, but I don't want to even be that close to that person. Cause I'm going to look at the situation differently or have a different perspective. So I'm super into reality. My favorites include Vanderpump rules right now. It's insane and so good right now. So if you even don't know Vanderpump rules, if you have TikTok or have been on the internet, you may have seen something about it. I love thousand pound sisters is one of my favorites on discover on that. TLC. Oh, it's so good. Amy and Tammy. I love them. Um, sister wives is great. I love all the 90 day fiancés. Um, I mean, there's no depth too low for me to watch. Very excited about the new season coming up of seeking sister husbands or brother husbands. <laughs> oh my That's gosh. Whole, I know. 
I know I, this is my, me like trying to get Rebecca to help me recap that because I think that would be fun. That's I have to admit, I watched, work. I watched sister wives for a while and I do love, there's yeah. a great podcast, uh, of, um, uh, uh on sister wives, um, surviving sister wives. Yeah. It's really funny. Cody they do a great job I love or Corey and Carly. How dare I? Say yeah. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> <awesome. great. laughs> The natural mistake. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I tried to get them to come on our show just because I, I just think they're so funny. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't able to work out. But um, but yeah, they're really good. But it's gotten so depressing the last like well, for a while it was like so boring. And then now all of a sudden now it's like really depressing. <laughs> I got Rebecca in this last season, which truly Gosh. is just like yeah, explosion just... everywhere everyone's <laughs> lives are ruined I'm like you should definitely watch <laughs> yeah it's a tough time to walk in also because there's now how many seasons 15 or 16 17. and so 17 so I my gift to Melissa for Christmas was I'll, <laughs> I'll start sister wives and I did and I yeah. will add it to my list now of favorite reality tv shows so you know those TLC shows have had such a horrible track record as far as like <laughs> Even Mama the Duggars. Like, yeah, pretty, all just, of them. Right. Well, that's why we have a podcast though, Rachel. Yeah, so, you know, it's like, like, also thank you. Take the good with the bad. <laughs> it's I, <my> livelihood. <laughs> I'm not as much reality TV that I, those kind of reality shows that I watch, but I, I am a huge reality competition person. Ooh, sure. Those yeah. I, I loved, uh, I love Survivor particularly. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, I haven't actually watched the last two seasons because I've been so busy, mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, well, the new season just started and I didn't watch the last season because I was so busy with Christmas coverage, uh, but mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you guys, I, I saw <laughs> all, all of yours. I was like, this is worse than Santa's life during, the, <laughs> during the holiday season. Yeah. yeah he's only busy on, right? the, on the week of Christmas. We're busy from October onward. Uh, but, uh, but actually really in August is when I start thinking about, okay, what are the movies? Who are we going to have on guests? All that stuff is Whoa. already, I'm already thinking about wow. it. In August. <laughs> uh, That's but, a um, big commitment. <laughs> yeah. Cause we do preview shows, which, which start at the beginning of the beginning of October. So you kind of have to be ready for everything. Uh, and, uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's busy, but, uh, but I do, I love survivor. I think it's such an interesting show and the, you know, now we've had over 40 seasons and Jeez. every season, the winner is a little bit different in how they go about it. And the, I think the, uh, the social dynamics is always very interesting, uh, yeah. to see you know, what happens. And, and, sure. uh, I, I'm aware that it's, you know, a heavily edited program, but, but still like, there's a lot of, like social dynamics that are, I think, still interesting. Totally. Yeah. I agree. I'm more yeah. of an amazing race competition show person uh -huh. myself, but yeah. that's another one that I've, I've kind of lost. I've stepped out of, yeah. so I, I need to get back into, but um, there's only so much time in a day. Yeah. Well, watch. I used to like amazing race more when it w like, it used to be where like, there was a lot of different plane options that people could take. There was a lot of different things that people could could do to to make their to either win or like take a big risk and for the i mean i haven't watched it in, in a couple of years but for a while i uh, it just seems like everybody's doing the same thing so mm. there's less risk like and it's just not as interesting as it used yeah to be, they're I following think. a formula yeah 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 that is yeah, that does take away from some of the fun and the intrigue for sure. Yeah, it's more like luck based if they don't get as good a cab driver or they don't, right. you know, something like that, or they're right. just not as good at the challenges as opposed to like the more strategy of it. Yeah, yeah. that's why yeah. I don't watch Survivor. I think I have no strategy in life or <laughs> personally or in games. So I just feel really dumb <laughs> when I watch. I'm I would not competitive be, either. I would be so bad at Survivor because- I build bonds with people very quickly. I, I mean, there are people I've had on the show like one time and I feel like I'm a good friend of theirs, sure. which I know is ridiculous, <laughs> but I don't know. I just, I, I know that I would, I would bond quickly and people would bond with me. And so then they would hate me for playing the game. And I just know I would be terrible. At so in other words, you're a good person. You're a good friend. <laughs> <Maybe, yeah. laughs> ho, ho, ho. 
We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Let's talk about Hallmark movies. So are are you kind of new to this genre? Is there something that you've watched, either the mysteries or just Hallmark movies in general? What, what about you, Rebecca? I'm I'm pretty new. I'll put on a Hallmark Christmas movie like to wrap gifts to or literally like play in my house as like a soundtrack like I don't necessarily sit down and watch it with my full attention and I've only done that a handful of times like Mm -hmm. in my mind it's like lifetime movies and hallmark movies and they're just kind of similar categories that I have like an outsider perspective on so it was fun to actually sit down and well we'll get to what I thought about the mystery but um but yeah I'm pretty new to this territory what about you Melissa same. I, uh, my mom's a big Hallmark movie watcher. So she's always writing me something about a blueberry hill or something. Oh, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, and then we had on, uh, for moms and mysteries, we had Ali Sweeney on a couple of times and she mm. had all the, um, chronicle mysteries yes. and it was like based on a podcaster and stuff. So that mm-hmm. was kind of cool to, to hear how she was doing all that stuff. So, but aside from that, I haven't really those ones were interesting because it was, because I know that she has this background in, in podcasts and loving podcasts and things, but like, it, it wasn't really a podcast. No, it, it was. And it was, certainly wasn't a true crime podcast where in you know, true crime podcasts, most of the time are scripted. They're not live, live happening. Like I think they, she wanted to include podcasting and they were like, this is the only way you can do it. And yeah. Like, All right, let's do <laughs> she it. She was basically <laughs> just a reporter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Not she a, had a podcast. And my favorite thing about those movies is the one that they had one where uh, they they couldn't because it's Hallmark, they couldn't have it be like a true mafia person. Uh-huh. They they had to have it be this underground olive oil syndicate. I don't know. <laughs> well, in all fairness, that usually is like the front cover for mm-hmm. the mafia is yeah. a retail Rebecca olive oil shop. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> like, legitimately live next to an olive oil storefront in one of these <laughs> neighborhoods i was like okay <laughs> sure yeah oh well, maybe it All was more oil. legit than i gave it credit for <laughs> i think that's I drawing know. from real experience maybe, maybe uh well we had an interesting year last year because there was there weren't that many of the mysteries they were focusing more on movies and mysteries on the dramas um and so we only we, we only had like five or six uh mm-hmm. and so then this year we've already had three mystery um, movies and they've all well no one was a second movie and then the other two were basically pilots and including this one that we're going to talk about uh today and we're talking about cases of mystery lane the cases of mystery lane and it follows alden and birdie case as they find a new way to keep the mystery alive alden takes classes in hopes of becoming a private investigator and birdie may hold the keys to solve one of his mysteries and this was directed by Mike Roll and written by Joel Dovev and Margot Froley and stars Paul Campbell and Amy Garcia. And overall, I, what did you think of the movie? Did, did you think it was successful? What, what were your thoughts, Rebecca, overall? Overall, I enjoyed it. Yeah. And, um, and, and I say that, I guess, with like an ounce of surprise because I, I the bar was low and I was just like, I'm going to watch this for preparation, but I got invested and I ended up really enjoying it and thought it was like 
written better than I expected it to be. I thought the acting was better than I expected it to be. Um, and I dare I say, even was like, I'd watch another mystery with the cases. Like I'd, mm-hmm. I'd watch them try to crack one again. So I I'm all for it. Yeah. What did you think Melissa overall? No, I would basically agree with what Rebecca said. Mm. It was really interesting. Did you say Paul? I think in one of the emails, you said Paul Campbell was a yes. fan favorite. I yes. adore him. I will watch anything he was. He's in. watchable. He was so yeah. good. Yeah. He was adorable and so funny. And it felt like some of his lines, he was just saying, which yeah. I really love that. Like it felt very natural. Um, and so I like was very much team him the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. He is very charming. He definitely has that sort of boy next door charm to him. Uh, and, uh, he's definitely one of the most popular of the Hallmark leading guys. Uh, and he's been doing Hallmark movies since, oh gosh, uh, since, oh, what, 2017, 2016, oh. something like that. So he's been around for a long time. He's also done, he was on Battlestar Galactica as kind of where some people outside of, I guess, no, his first one was 2013. Wow. So oh, he's wow. been around yeah. for a, a long a veteran. Long time. Yeah. He, a favorite, a fan favorite is called window wonderland, uh, where I, I joke that you, in a Hallmark Christmas movie, you can't be a good person in the city unless you are, <laughs> unless you are a window designer or running a parade. <laughs> that's that's, that's very, specific. very specific criteria, yes. <laughs> which in this movie, he's a window designer. No, so there you go. So funny. Well, there you go. Um, there's a, uh, there's a, f- a few times when you get like the miracle on, uh, on, uh, when you get miracle on 39th street, the, um, whole, um, uh, like the uh, department store per- sure. plot, you know, sure that you get that occasionally, but, but for the most part, you have to be running a parade or it's like a window designer. The, it's like the lifetime p- parallel trope would be like, you have to return to your hometown. Yes. Like. That's like the <laughs> core part of yeah. your arc story is like yeah. going home. There was a um, there was a movie last year called The Tale of Two Christmases where there's like two identities, kind of like sliding doors. You know, yeah. like one identity is her going back to the country hometown, and the other identity is just staying in the city. And I'm just like, what is the point of this movie? There is absolutely <laughs> no way that she's going to end up with the like relatively nice attorney in the city side. Like that's. <laughs> When you said Never gonna relatively, happen. I thought you were going to say relative. And I was like, wow, this has taken a turn. She's not going to end up with <laughs> the relative. Are you sure it's not like, on TLC? Oh, I might have seen this show. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, there's no point in watching this movie. She's going to end up with the hometown hunk, of course. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but anyway. But that yeah, I nice. agree with you all. I enjoyed this movie. I, I It is unusual to have the leads be a married couple that... Mm. The only, the only other time they've done that was with Garage Sale Mysteries, which she was married, but like her husband wasn't exactly like the co-investigator. Mm-hmm. So this is, I mean, this kind of feels like heart to heart or, you know, one of the older shows from this, you know, from the eighties, seven years or eighties that that would have like a couple investigating, you know, investigating things. And um, so it had sort of a vintage, I think, charm to it. I mean, it'll be nice going forward because I don't think that like there'll be as much conflict with them going forward. Uh, yeah, I, I would imagine that like every uh, every movie isn't going to be, are we getting a divorce or not? <laughs> I, they I would hope. did that in the beginning. <laughs> I mean, we saved that plot line for reality TV shows. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we just covered one like that. Yeah. But I did Um, enjoy those stakes and that conflict. So that did drive some of it. So it will be interesting to see what happens when they remove that from the Mm -hmm. dynamic. Yeah. What did you think of Amy Garcia and Paul Campbell as far as their chemistry together? Uh, What do you think, Melissa, about that? I thought they were really great together. I will say I thought she had a gambling problem very early on because, right? I'm really glad you're bringing that up. They show yes. her like gambling, slamming the thing closed. And they're like, we're never going to talk about this again. That's the only thing they don't resolve. And like, I don't need everything wrapped up in a bow, but I'm like, what? Cause all the movie, I, it was very secretive and she didn't want him to know. So I was like, oh, his secrets, he's going to PI school. Hers is she's an online gambling problem, but it was never spoken of again, unless I missed it. And who is lizard King 784? <laughs> he was on there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. I mean. 
they don't really resolve it. Uh, but I, I, I felt kind of like their resolve, the resolving of it was that she won, I guess, if you're a winner yeah. in online gambling, then. Uh, okay. So maybe it was just character color. Like she's a winner and that's what she does. Oh yeah. She wins. Sense. All she does is win. <laughs> I yeah, I guess. Was that a Drake song? <laughs> Um, but I, I mean, I would hope that we would see that come up again because it definitely was unusual. And, uh, the, the, this was on the violent side for one of these cozy mysteries, I would say. And they, they just had one with Nikki Deloach, uh, that was also, I thought pretty violent. Um, I mean, I was shocked that they have someone, you know, hanging themselves. That was, yeah, I was too shocking. I forgot about that part because I'm going, well, the turkey baster never went in his mouth. It wasn't that violent. <laughs> and I didn't think tasers could really kill. We come from the true crime space. So I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, this is like G. Um, but yeah. I forgot about the, the hanging. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't really see how, I mean, again, this is a recap, so spoilers, uh, but I don't really see how Paula would have been able to have gotten him up there like that and hanging and yeah. With the seemed, wheelchair, there was a and, lot going on with Paul. Yeah, and I mean, because he would be very, he would be heavy. I mean, for yeah. her to be able to not only get him up there, but get him, and and for the like the uh, the ceiling to be strong enough to hold him. Wait, I don't know. Are but you supposed to believe that she did that while he was just like up and at him or, well, or i think she tased him she probably okay de- thank you i stabilized him I was- in some way yeah, <laughs> yeah. she loved the taser I, you true. know <laughs> i had a moment yeah. where i was like oh my gosh he's just like going up super like, woman right, paula yeah. see what you can do you can deadlift me well i was a little surprised too that they never because when you tase somebody it leaves like little buttons oh like, yeah little, this little you know piece of paper things yeah and so i would think that they would be there in tim's room tim's office and also in what's his name's the mob guys oh which yeah she tastes this at the very beginning because it starts like pretty like whoa yeah this guy's yeah. getting tasered at the beginning well, yeah that guy was i know angry he gets a knock on his door he was waiting it said don't knock and it was like he was just like standing next to the door as soon as he heard a knock he's like get out of here i'm like sir you could have been in the bathroom or doing anything how are you already yelling those yeah. signs are so real too i don't yeah. know if you guys have lived in apartment buildings, but like, there's a lot of reasons you put them on your front door and they could be very innocuous, like baby sleeping, you know, but I've had, I've had my fair amount of like, do not knock or I swear to (laughs) signs on my (laughs) door. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, And they, they did a pretty good job. I thought with the red herrings in this, in this movie, um, you have like the old lady is one of the red herrings and she's yep. upset. Someone stole her, her wheelchair. Um, she literally is like, has a gun <laughs> with her at all times. <laughs> like, wow. Amazing. Lady. <laughs> um, and so Paul Campbell is take Alden is his name. Alden is taking these private detective classes and he's hiding it from his wife. And it seems like to me that that would just cause more drama like hiding it then like it's not like this is a like morally reprehensible activity that you like right. and, 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 and and not that people can't play poker or whatever but like arguably her hiding her the thing she's hiding is more morally questionable than like i'm taking a class like yeah okay. i have something to yeah. better myself <laughs> yeah it sounds like you know we learn later though that he has this pattern of like starting new careers and not following through and flaking yeah. out on things so maybe this to him was like let me just do it achieve it get the badge or the certification and then i'll tell her mm-hmm. um because she's you know she's so ambitious and she's like much more focused on her career and she's yeah. had this like upwards trajectory so I'm guessing it for him it was just like a little bit of a shame thing because he didn't want to fail again and if he failed it then she wouldn't have to know yeah and it was kind of (laughs) funny too to me that he he's like I don't just the way they were treating him being an accountant (laughs) I know (laughs) like scum of the earth (laughs) I know I'm like it's a really reasonable career choice (laughs) yeah I mean I I it, they were acting like it was such a like lowbrow, like I mean, we got lowbrow, but also, also kind of highbrow in a way that it's like, 
being an accountant, you know, it's like this, 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 uh, great thing that, oh, he's finally found his, his oh. role in life and whatever. And that was kind of funny to me because I don't know. I just, I worked in accounting for years. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. boring. This is a guy who loves, loves and collects robots. Like he yeah. doesn't want to be an accountant. Yeah. He has like more passion in him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All love to our accountant listeners. So you do amazing yeah, work. We need you. you. We need you. Yeah. yeah please please <laughs> do what you do. <laughs> Never stop. Yeah. That's right. Did anyone uh-huh. else yeah. think that the, the girl was a realtor at first? When they were talking 3%, 3.5, I was like, these are realtors. And then oh, yeah. they say what, breaking, yeah, breaking necks and cashing checks. <laughs> Aggressive for both jobs, a realtor think, or an attorney. Yeah, it was a little, I was a little unsure what kind of law she was in. It was because there was this condo place. And so it's real like real estate law, actually. I guess real estate law. Yeah. So you actually were on to it. Yeah. Um, it did take me a minute to find, I didn't think real estate, but I wasn't positive. It was law until I saw like the name on the the building, like inside mm-hmm. the literally said law firm with their names. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then well, it all made sense. So yeah, there's this guy, Tim, and uh, he, uh, he's working really hard, crushing it. <laughs> Crushing it on his license plate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Welcome to the Pilot Podcast. My name is BJ. And my name is Me Too. And we promise this promo is worth it, so please don't skip ahead. We're two judgy friends who put our judgmental skills to work for you. We review the pilot episodes of new and popular shows and shows that our listeners request to answer your question, should I watch this? Look, a lot of us are spending a lot more time at home. And yes, we should be reading and trying new projects and enriching ourselves. But does anything beat binging a great show? Let us take the guesswork out of deciding what your next show will be. Tune in to The Pilot Podcast at thepilotpodcast.com. So, you know, she says goodbye to him at the office, and then he uh, ends up hanging himself, which was, I wrote down, shocking. Yeah. Yeah. It really was. And then we find out that he had been having an affair with Kyle from work and that his wife evidently was like fine with it. Mm -hmm. She was, I guess, an open relationship of some kind. I mean, and this is definitely kind of new for Hallmark to not only have a gay relationship, but also to have like an open relationship. Like that was like, whoa. (laughs) That definitely, I was like, oh, okay. I like that we're, you know, that was a fun surprise, first of all, plot wise. And I was like, Oh, I guess Hallmark is not what it, you know, what I thought or imagined it to be. And maybe was even just five years ago. So yeah. Normalizing alternative. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I thought that was, it was interesting. And uh, how suspicious were you of Kyle? Do you, he was definitely the biggest of the red herrings. Did you, Melissa, did you feel pretty suspicious of him? No, because they tried to make me feel suspicious (laughs) of him. So they made him too obvious. Yeah. And then I was like, nope, it's not Kyle, but also I don't know what his deal is. He's crying a lot here and yes. uh, get a grip, man. That was my thought. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was surprised that they made him in this gay relationship just because it seemed like they were also sort of making him a romantic threat with. That's what I Birdie. thought. Birdie. With Birdie. Mm-hmm. Well, right. Because what Alden chooses, doesn't he choose to follow him when he does the surveillance yes. exercise? So we're all thinking there's something going on, but they're like work BFF. So that's why I thought it worked so well that it turns out he was in a gay, he was in a relationship with Tim and probably not interested in Birdie. Like I, I thought yeah. that was like a very, like, yeah. didn't see both of those coming. Yeah, it was it, that that's the part of it that kind of made it a surprise to me, but I agree that they spent way too much time on him for him to actually yeah. be the killer. Uh, I, I was suspect just on that level. And also yeah. he was introduced too early as a suspect in these movies. You, you count on the, the actual murderer to be usually introduced in the last third of the movie or not introduced, but like set up as a real Right. potential yeah usually it's not in the beginning because they you know that they want to throw you off sure um but yeah we found i find out that um 
that I guess not only is uh, Alden an accountant, but he also evidently invested in crypto. <laughs> I love that joke. Like <laughs> that being a thing of his, I'm like, perfect. This is, this yeah. is timely. Yeah. <laughs> He's a uh-huh. crypto bro. Yes. And uh, what do you think of her mother? So this was an interesting character because she's the partner at the law firm and she's very hard on Birdie. She uh, she doesn't want to give her any favors. It's not a Nepo hire uh, for, for them, but she was pretty cold too. I mean, woof. the I fact that with- yeah, you're, you're like a partner had just hung himself and that wouldn't like you'd be immediately like, we got to get back to work. We got to have full confidence of our, like, I don't know. I would think that almost anybody would be upset. I was pulling for Paula to kill her. I was. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, they got the wrong victim. Like, Like, I thought they tried a little too hard to like make her this tough, you know, tough as nails boss lady. Like, and in the process, like you said, like what human wouldn't take a moment and like let their employees Even have a minute? Optics. Yeah, 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 exactly. She's so strategic and successful. She she kind of have that instinct to know what would look good or bad. Um, so in a weird way, like they're like, oh, we're gonna put a woman at the head of this firm, and she's gonna be the senior partner and the founder of the firm because that's so like current and progressive. But it's also yeah. like they were like, but she is devoid of all human emotion and (laughs) can't act like she has a daughter working at her law firm. Like that was outrageous Mm -hmm. that she couldn't call her mom. And, you know, it just, it was a little too much law firms are like half the time family. Anyway, it's like Brown, Brown and Brown people with the same last name. They're related. (laughs) Yeah. We've learned that with this whole Murdoch thing. (laughs) Yeah, really. There you go. That's right. That's right. Uh, but yeah, she was, she was a lot and it was interesting to see, I guess, where they go now that they did like try to soften her at the very end. But, but yeah, these, in these cozy mysteries, you know, they have murderers all the time in these (laughs) small, I forget where this one took place, but these small Oh, I read it today. It's like Worcester, Mass. Okay. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Um, that, uh, that, uh, and you're just thinking like you would be like horrified you'd be devastated if like a friend colleague good person was just found like that's you'd be that you need therapy you wouldn't be showing up at the uh the local like line dancing bar (laughs) that same night that's chin up (laughs) yeah just like chin up everybody's watching you dance for what was his name tim tim dance for tim (laughs) Uh, yes. And, uh, so that's the, yeah, that's when we find out that, uh, that, that Kyle and Tim were in a relationship that Tim's wife knew. Um, I, I didn't really understand why they made Paula so into horses. I love that. I love <laughs> well, him calling it a cry for help. <laughs> yeah. Alden. Like, I don't like- know what was suspicious about that. Cause I guess they're so expensive or something. I don't know. I'm going to well, go out on a limb and say, yeah, it is suspicious. So just in general, suspicious. sorry, Rebecca, go ahead. Automatically. No, no, if you've got horses in your house. Yeah. It's not an like relatable hobby, right? It is pretty like you have to live in a certain place and like have access and, and yeah. it's expensive, but I guess it's related to her sister, which is her ultimate, you know, motivator for these revenge killings. Mm. So I guess it was a way to like, bring a storyline to her deceased yeah. sister I, I don't know and she's paula is a lawyer at the firm right oh, she, isn't she paralegal. like a paralegal yeah and okay. they that's how she gets introduced and i have to say melissa and i did talk offline for a second about this and like we both raised an eyebrow when we met paula because they were real like um you know they kind of like dismissive shoot her dismissive is the word thank you when they're like oh you know a paralegal works for five months and they think they're uh, the new expert. And I was like, okay. Like, so Paula is like poking and uh, maybe knows more than she should or acting mm-hmm. like she knows more than she should. So my eye was on Paula early on. So Paula is upset because her sister got murdered by this mafia group. Right. And now mm-hmm. there's this condo thing with the, uh, the, the firm is investigating 
this condo case where the uh, the mafia guy lived. And so he's not going to get uh, arrested. And so she decides to take life, uh, take things t- into her own hands and decides that she's going to whack off <laughs> the mafia guy. Uh, and, and then things kind of spiral from there because Tim finds out that she had done this. And yeah. Uh, and so what's the only answer is to kill again. <laughs> yeah. Steal yeah, a yeah. wheelchair, bring it over, <laughs> grab your taser, hang him from the banister. No one will question anything, which they mm-hmm. didn't. So good for her. Good for her. She was onto something there. She was so close to getting away with it. So close. wasn't for those rascally husband and wife. <laughs> yeah. And so then the, uh, we have, uh, this old lady at Francis Taylor, her name with the gun and then we have gasco is the mobster and the fbi they basically sneak into to gasco's place and he's got the fake mustache and hat oh right oh yeah I right about that. which is funny i i i said in our last mystery recap that for me i enjoy these mystery shows more when they are a little bit campy a little bit yeah. silly mm-hmm. more than when they're trying to be like gritty and realistic. Yeah. I, and uh, so this one to me, like had some of that camp with sure. most of it from Paul Campbell's character, because it was just silly, you know, like him with the mustache and things like that. And him drinking like a milkshake. We never saw him buy it. Eating a hamburger. We never saw him buy it. True. What That's kind of lactate point. is he taking that? He never had to go to the bathroom on his whole like <laughs> hunt down for this guy. I was like, my goodness, but even should be an ad. Yeah. And those are like, they're like very self-aware nods to like the tropes of these mysteries, like the cop yeah. eating the fast food in the car, the, the disguise, you know, I, mm-hmm. I liked those too. Cause it is like, we're in on it. Like we know what we're doing here. Um, and I think it worked the way he yeah. delivered Alden as a character, mm-hmm. like totally, totally worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I liked how you had the murder board. That was very classic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in the basement. always love a murder board. Yes, always. <laughs> and then uh, we have the um, we have him telling uh, telling Birdie, "I'm not quitting on us, I'm not giving up." So sweet, sweet Very. moment. Yes. Um, she and definitely then, was closer to quitting. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. had the she had, had the, the paper straw. Oh yeah, she had, she had the divorce <laughs> Um, and then uh, Kyle gets really upset about this whole condo thing investigation. So we're supposed to be kind of building up our our uh, uh, intrigue about him, suspicions. Uh, and then they get a brick through the window. Let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> right. Yes. I mean, I guess you can only write so many words on a brick, but I was like, eh, I think you can do better <laughs> with that. <laughs> Stay away from the condos. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised it wasn't in the like, ho- you know, like hostage cutout. Uh, yeah, writing like that would have been fun. Zodiac killer style. Yes, <laughs> like a cipher. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he says, "I don't want to be known as the guy who quits things," and I know in my heart they're both worth fighting for. Hmm. Um, and so he thinks that it's Kyle. He's pretty convinced. Um, and he gets the login information from Paula and then he's with, like, then there's this, she's with Kyle, he's with Paula. So it's like, Ooh, which one? I thought that was pretty effective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They did a good job with that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, the, and, there was like a real time discovery too. Cause yeah. of when they're looking at the map and breaking into the fitness app thing. Yeah. That was clever. I thought, because it turns out Kyle's been cheating on his steps. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That was good. The good vehicle to get to that data, which, you know, drove the plot. Mm-hmm. It was, it was good. Yeah. So there's like this, uh, this moment where it's like, which one is going to come out to be the murderer? It's going to be one of these two people and maybe to surprise, maybe not. It's Paula and Paula tasers Alden. I mean, she was just treating this thing. Like it was cotton candy. Like it was a cotton candy gun. Yeah, she was all about it. She was like, one word and the taser goes off. Yeah. She's yeah. in traffic tasing people next to her. She can't get enough of it. Yeah. And she's not worried about like 
anyone coming home or no. I don't know. Mm-hmm. She's very relaxed. Yeah. Paula. Yeah. Well, Returned, and, but relaxed. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> now it, it, the, it's getting to like serial killer status at this point. Like the yes. bodies are piling up. Yes. It's I like mean. a spree. <laughs> but a very slow spree like she knows he is in on it he knows about it she's like i'm gonna keep asking questions you get out of the house you've done your tasing yeah. leave <laughs> well if you can get your murder monologuing that you know that that's a win true i did love all the monologuing in this because yeah. even when alden was like putting in his robots putting them together he's like oh buddy i'll miss you blah 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 <laughs> i'm gonna take you and i'm going to ship you too town in California or whatever. Yeah. I was like, okay, we're talking out loud to ourselves. I get it. Yeah. I've had those. Yeah. Days. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then device. She duct takes duct tapes him to the chair. Uh, and uh, a chair and with wheels though. Chair with <laughs> wheels. <laughs> True. So lucky for him. Because you have to work with what you've got and she's going to yeah. make him swallow detergent. That was a- another kind of shocking moment it got pretty close to him like she's got the like turkey you said baster. the turkey baster and she, <laughs> oh, she was like it'll oh. be over soon I'm like what is what do you think is in this detergent I don't think it'll just be like she made it sound like it was just going to make him go to sleep like she had Benadryl or something I'm like yeah. I think there's going to be a few things that happen before then <laughs> I was thinking about that too. Cause I, 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 obviously it's not like something they recommend, but I don't think you'd like die from detergent. The Tide Pod challenges of 2020, <laughs> lots of people died from that, but like, oh, they really not, die or is just not healthy. Remember. It might not be quick though. Died. And what, what happens quick. is not suitable for homework. So we right. knew the baster was not touching the lips, right? Yeah. Like, which does help you not that totally freak feminism. out. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. I think, I, I think the ones I heard of were that there was like major problems was with children that were to eating the Tide Pods. Sure. Like yeah. not that we recommend eating Tide Pods. We don't, but I don't think they die, but, um, but who knows, maybe you would people listening probably know better than us. So tell us, <laughs> but, but she was, she seemed to be acting like this was going to, this was like arsenic or something. It was going to And kill frankly, him. why are we doubting Paula at this point? Yeah. She's proven <laughs> she's point. capable of killing. So honestly, <laughs> looking back, shame on us. Yeah, that's true. Good point. <laughs> Um, but then we also had early in the movie, uh, Rick is kind of painted as a, uh, possible, uh, possible red herring in that he's kind of bullying and mean mm-hmm. to Alden in class. And it turns out that Rick picked Alden as his person he was going to follow. Fun surprise. Yeah. So that was fun. Cause he was kind of a jerk to begin with. Cause I'd forgotten about him. Like he totally. was antagonistic yeah. in that class, <laughs> never saw him again. And I thought, oh, this is just more like thorns in Alden's side to trying to become a PI. So when mm-hmm. he makes his return as this hero, I truly didn't see that coming. And I'm yeah. like, okay, that was fun. Okay. But did anyone else think it was going to cost $750 for these records and not $7 and 50 cents when they were, that sitting? was maybe the most confusing part of the film. He said, <laughs> you owe me seven fifty, And I was like, yeah, he's been doing research and all this stuff right. for you. And then he's like, you had $7 and 50 cents for records. I was like, Hallmark, you guys got it. Was that a, a joke? I could it. not tell if he I, was like, did, did he think seven fifty? <laughs> seven? I, I, it was yeah. confusing. It, I was, I, I just, the number, yeah, I, I fully thought $750 and that was just a moment I had. 
Yeah, same, same. But I liked this uh, this Rick, uh, James Palladino is the actor's name. He is pretty handsome, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Hallmark. Yeah, <laughs> Use he, him more. he was, was like the tall, dark, bad boy to Alden's like boy next door. That was yeah. a good like, you know, contrast, mm-hmm. I think. It yeah. was, it was good. Also, they have Matt Hamilton in this movie playing the police officer, kind of trying to sort of investigate this. Right. But they underused him. They he was hardly in it. And I hope that in future movies we get to see. I mean, imagine in future movies, like these two will be kind of meddling more in the officers' cases. This one, like they can't obviously can't have every single case be involving the law firm and somebody in the law right. firm that gets like this law firm would get a pretty bad <laughs> reputation after a while. And so uh so I, I think in future installments, we're going to see these two kind of meddling and uh, into Officer Newton's cases. Is Are you what referring I, to, yeah. is he the quotation marks guy? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. barely remember him. Yeah. He wasn't in it much and he's so good. He's such a fun actor. Okay. Uh, so I, I, that's what I'm saying. I think in the future, I bet we'll be seeing, because I think they'll be making more of these and I bet we'll see more of officer newton in the future oh good is my guess uh, but he's yeah he's really fun actor uh he hasn't gotten a leading role in hallmark yet but i hope that's coming soon because he's he's great he but he a lot of times is like the best friend or you know somebody somebody like that the neighbor um and uh, i think he deserves the top find out that she took the wheelchair right so right. we find that right she didn't have a plan that was like her little yeah. oops she did she forgot to figure out how to transport the body people yes. almost got shot for asking that lady questions about the wheelchair <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Holla>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and then uh the uh they get kind of they get the ham from the mobsters from the other is that supposed to be like the other crime family oh yeah they're I like rival idea. right yeah yeah because they were like hey we know it <laughs> Why were they thinking this is like then, La Cosa Nostra was, in oh, right. Massachusetts? Yeah. And instead of olive oil, we have we have a ham. So a ham. You know, just it's always delicious. That gang. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, that's a friendly, friendly mobster giving mm-hmm. out uh free ham, free hams. Uh but uh but they also get Tim's life insurance and uh, oh, then we and then she gives him the shredded divorce papers because he had seen right. it in her office. I re- yeah. Earlier. Okay. But so. the life insurance check, do we really think Richie Rich has given a whole hundred thousand dollars? You don't stay rich if you give away money like that. You just don't. I appreciated that they didn't faux, like not accept it. Like they weren't like, oh no, no. We yeah, they didn't even, <laughs> you're supposed to at least resist it once. Yeah. After yeah. She was like, you accept I'll it. manage that account. I'm like, okay. I'm like, Get that you know, she's an attorney and her family has some money. I've seen their house. They make cute lattes for breakfast. They're going to be fine. Well, all the more reason if you were like that close to Tim, that you would be devastated. You would be really sad. Yeah, like yeah. no money in the world could like yeah. you know heal the hurt. But she was like, "Thank you." They're like walking on sunshine, walking out of there. Let's <laughs> yeah. have things. that baby we haven't talked about yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then she ends up taking the class uh, with him. Yes, so it's like couple times. Yeah, because mm-hmm. this one thing that was like separate, that was hidden, that he did alone, she's now joining him. So that was like mm-hmm. a nice. Yeah. And then what they didn't show us is them going out to the casino after to play like Texas Hold'em. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that hundred K is not going to last long. Her. Yeah, maybe they're setting it up for a future. Like maybe they're going to get in trouble because she's gambling. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe no, there's well, there, be an I, intervention. I, when you have mobsters and gambling in your story, you know that's going to lead somewhere. Yeah, it has to. There's no other end. No other <laughs> possibility. Yeah. I think so. Uh, and then of course it ends with a woman there at their house um, with a case. So, right. yeah. So that, that's why we know, of course, there can be more movies. And I, I think that, I mean, the first movie is always tough because you have to introduce everything. And, uh, but uh, I think that this, the next ones will be even more successful because the, it'll just be, here's the case, the couple solving it together. Right. I think that'll be fun. 
Um, and you won't have this like divorce Setup. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe they'll get pajamas now that they're, um, really sticking it out. Cause they yeah. were full on sweaters to bed. And I thought that was weird. <laughs> that was and weird. I understand it's Hallmark and they don't want them looking like skimpy or sexy, but daytime sweaters in bed. It was weird. I wear a daytime sweater to bed. That's weird. Often <laughs> I wear socks. I don't know why we're having to do this you, right now. Well, it's full on outerwear. <laughs> I do. I mean, I've worn a sweats sweatshirt, I guess on a, on that's occasion. different. On occasion. She had on a sweater, like yeah. not cotton. It was like a blend. Yeah. It didn't look like it was without itch. It had stripes. <laughs> It was such but a weird thing. I can sleep in it this right now, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> but I tend that to get hot at night. So I, I wouldn't, yeah. I would not want. Yeah. Here's the key to doing that. You sleep in layers and then you take off layers. So as you reach a body temperature of 102, at some point, you lose a layer <laughs> refreshing. It's like the cool side of the pillow, but like your whole body Yeah. or I'm sweating myself to death. I don't know. <laughs> I did notice yeah. that though, that. Cause I can think of anything worse than wearing like jeans to bed. Yes. Like they both terrible. looked like we wouldn't have been surprised if the covers came down and they were in pants and boots. Yeah. Like it was weird. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Not normal. Yes. So I wonder who gets all of Paula's, um, horse stuff now that she's, um, oh now that gosh. she's, uh, probably going to get the, I mean, she could probably. I think at the death penalty for this and spending, I don't know what mass. I want to see is. Hallmark talking about the death penalty. That would be wild. <laughs> the trial of Paula, uh, <laughs> think whatever her last name was. Yeah. Illegal. I mean, she killed two people. One of them was a bad guy, but the other wasn't at all. Uh, I bet they'll Paula find some did... God. criminal conduct within the office too, because you know, she was hacking like files. Oh yeah. That's a good point. Is it attempted murder to try to turkey base somebody with? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely, it is. Yeah, and kidnapping. Yeah, yeah. Try a million a, sips. Threatening a police officer. <laughs> yeah, it, there's a lot going on. Sorry, just all this, all these sirens. Just one sec. You're good. Oh, it's they're getting Paula. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think things are not gonna. She's not gonna be going back to her horse house anytime soon no, so, not Paula. no uh so yeah we do our scores one to five crowns here on the pod and so what would you give this movie the cases of mystery lane um what would you give it one to five as far as a movie what do you think oh, melissa i give it three count crowns and like a nice brooch okay um, i <laughs> Because there was some pizzazz with it. I think they have places to go with it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's a five yet. And I feel like a four is a little too generous when we're just mm -hmm. getting into it. So yeah. three and a brooch. What do you think, Rebecca? Well, I guess I'm a generous person because my instinct was four solid crowns because three is average. And I thought it was really above average. Yeah. And four leaves room to get that fifth. So I'm mm -hmm. going with a solid four. Okay, good. Yeah, I think I'll do three and a half uh, crowns. So basically kind of the same, three and a brooch, I think is good. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it was a pretty solid start. And uh, so I'll be curious to see what they do going forward. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, let us know if you are listening, what you thought of this movie, uh, put in the comments section or on Twitter. We'd love to hear your thoughts and where can people follow you social media and also find your podcast. Uh, well, you can visit our website, criminalityshow.com, which will link out to your favorite pod player where you can find our episodes. We are on Instagram at criminality show, as well as Twitter. We're trying our best on TikTok. Um, <laughs> our name there is at criminality show podcast. What Probably. is it? Probably I, it's many, many words. Just it's, keep typing things. Yeah. Just, you'll find us. Many words. Um, but yeah, you can definitely connect with us. We'd love to hear from you. Yes. Sounds good. Yeah. You can find me at Rachel's reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Ron Tomato. So check that out. Also, be sure you're following the podcast at Homework's Pod and Homework's Podcast, all of our social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews to both of our podcasts. It really helps a lot and get those five-star reviews on iTunes. And then we also have, if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, 
which we have our monthly watch alongs with the hall stars this month we have Rhiannon fish coming on and we're going to watch uh, one of her movies the christmas retreat uh so that's a really cool experience that you get for any tier of the patron uh, as well as lots of other fun benefits so check that out and also we have the merch store which has lots of fun hallmark inspired merch including if you're a fan of paul campbell you can get team paul shirts cute <laughs> oh. yes check that out very cute <laughs> Uh, take a look at that and thanks so much to both of you it was so much fun to get to know you we'll definitely have to have you back for another mystery recap thanks likewise for thank you for us. having us this was <laughs> fun bye everyone